And mm -hmm. when blind men are asked to create almost like with clay, mm -hmm. the hip to waist ratio that they would prefer, they also prefer a 0.72 hip to waist ratio. And does anyone want to guess the most fertile women in the world are a 0.72, 0 .72 hip to waist ratio? Isn't it weird mm -hmm. how men prefer women who have signs of fertility? It, it must be culture. Mm -hmm. It must be because of Playboy. Mm -hmm. It must be my heterosexuality must be a construct right. that was created through television, radio and film. <laughs> or it's fucking genetics. Yeah. One of the two, not really sure, but if it is genetics, then that means. Before I start this one, we got guys in the house. Guys, just raise your hands. Do you prefer a heavier woman? Who here likes a heavier woman? Nobody. Uh, Nobody damn, likes heavier damn. women. <laughs> Nobody have like just Scott. Scott's, Scott's the only one who Scott likes heavier women. Nothing. <laughs> Eight to eighty eight. Everyone now, an hour over you, dead. Like, you to do some cardio. <laughs> so, what's, what's going on here? Thigh, thigh gap is the yeah. ultimate expression of femininity. Maybe my favorite topic. Like I, I really do find this really? very interesting. Men's body weight preferences and women's body weight modification behavior. One of the most interesting things in the mating and beautification literature. Tell so, us more. First, men's body weight preferences vary dramatically across cultures. There are cultures such as, you know, uh, some parts of the South African Zulu where women's BMIs of up to 38, right? Whoa. Very heavy, right? That That's close to, to morbid obesity from a, from a technical perspective, uh, which, which starts at about 40 and it's already, you know, very obese. Those body weights are preferred among those Is there groups a reason up to for that. them? Yeah, and no, I'll speak about that in a second because I want to paint the variation as well. In somewhere like urban Japan, on the contrary, or Korea, you might see body weights as low as like underweight uh, BMI is as low as 18 da, 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 da. and look BMI isn't a great metric for health right and there's going to be variation as to how appropriate it is for one person right like my BMI would technically be overweight on a BMI scale but what uh, yeah but I'm not I'm genuinely just a little dense right that's just but very slightly that's a quite a common experience it's like um the BMI says I'm overweight but I'm actually healthy yeah. or the BMI says that I'm normal weight but I can see that I'm actually quite unhealthy right, right. so it's not a great measure for health but it is a great measure for size mm. right it's a it's a measurement of how big you are it's, right. it's kilograms by uh, per meter squared so it's a measure of how big mm -hmm. you are. So men's preferences vary dramatically. And the variation seems to be partially explained by media and westernization, but it's also explicable by socioeconomic status, access to resources. Oh. There's some very funny studies which you know have replicated and uh, have been done in different ways that show that men who are acutely hungrier prefer <laughs> larger women. I I'm serious. And there are also more cultural studies that show that men in different groups by socioeconomic status tend to tend to vary in such a way that wealthier men and men in wealthier environments prefer women of lighter body weights whereas men in poorer or or relatively poorer men tend to prefer women of heavier body weights interesting and so from an evolutionary perspective you might wonder why would this be the case and, and there's also some other fun evidence for it. I mean, we could we could talk all day about. It. There's some evidence that when during times of economic scarcity, Playboy centerfold models get heavier in the oh. states, and during well, times of economic <laughs> abundance, they get lighter. I've never heard Mac and talk about this. I've heard other people talk about it. So there's uh, there's these women that are like that'll say things like, "Well, the only reason they're Westernized standards of beauty for women to be skinny and attractive," and of course that's not true. It has nothing to do with the magazines mm -hmm. or the television shows that mm -hmm. we watch. That is not why I like women with smaller weight. Than, than hips. That is not the reason. But what I do think is interesting, and I've, I've heard this before, is that when there's a scarcity of food, men like heavier women. But that's not westernized uh, culture. Like That is a survival. That I understand evolutionarily why that exists. That means that the woman has food around. That's why yeah. you'd want to be with her. That makes sense. And then the other thing is like being that overweight a lot of times actually may make it harder for you to carry mm. a child to term. Being skinny, though, is a sign of youth, and it's more likely for you to be fertile the younger you – I mean, up to a point. We're talking about like 18, 19, 20 years old. You're more likely to be fertile, and I think that's why wealthier men would choose skinnier wives and men who are poor would put uh, would choose heavier wives in general. What is your ideal body type there. for a guy? For a dude, it is attractive males. Like I would say that I have to have self-control over myself because I am a horny girl and I always have been. But you guys' body type is the more, I would say, attractive type of male. Like just natural muscle, not steroids. I can see steroids like popping out of the guy. Like I like natural muscle, a dude who eats healthy, like not too huge and not too like, you know, just lean, which I, I've dated taller, guys. Taller than you? 
Tall is fine. Um, I fell in love with guys who were Scott, five ten. Five. I fell in. <laughs> I fell in love in my twenty. I was twenty three. I fell in love with a guy who was that was five ten, and I was five seven and a half, and I wear heels, and I'm six one. I was in love with him. I would have his baby. I would have reproduced real fast, but he was the f- boy. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it's not always like. But that's what it does it for you. Alexandra, right. what's your ideal male body look? I like muscular. Anything about height? Anything about Taller facial than me. features? Taller than you. Mm-hmm. Taller than you. Does he have to be have darker skin than you or lighter skin than you? <laughs> it doesn't matter. No? Uh, does the guy that you dated that was taller than you and muscular, is he the one that cheated on you? Uh, <laughs> no? <laughs> I, I mean. <laughs> He's the one you cheated on? No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Wait, what? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm messing with you. I'm messing what's, with your, what's your ideal body type for a guy? Uh, so, I mean, he doesn't have to have, you know, too big of muscles or anything. Just look healthy because I like to work out. So I like somebody that, you know, also likes to be healthy and work out. Doesn't have to be too big. Like she said, like, it's not really into that. Um, definitely height matters to me because I am a little taller. I mean, I'm five, six, so I definitely like to wear heels and I don't want someone to be shorter than me. I don't know. I just, I don't like that. According to so, Reddit, yeah. I'm also five, six. You guys can look it up. <laughs> yeah. If you guys want to check that out. Yeah. We're going to get, yeah. we're, we're going to have the uh, measurement stick installed on the door here. Real. What's your body type? Um, anyone that takes care of their body. Like I definitely can't do a man that has a bird chest. If you're skinny, mm-mm. a bird chest. Hell no. Okay. But anyone that just takes care of themselves, nothing too muscular or bulky. Right. It's just unattractive. Okay, so, well, when he's talking about BMI, that's deflection right there. Cause the thing is, is like, we know an overweight person. We know morbidly obese. Okay. Like mm-hmm. technically I'm overweight for my, my height for BMI because mm-hmm. muscle always more than fat that's easy okay um that's usually meant to distract away from the fact that like there's a lot of what i call masculine apologetics going on here it's like well you know this you know guys like all kinds of girls and girls like all kinds of guys it's like no there's actually some predictability to this and you know women tend to find more muscular guys more attractive and want to bang those guys and to my knowledge there's not a uh, any dating sites for men or for women to find big beautiful men right they might find <laughs> a guy who's like executive introduction Productions with very wealthy men, but there's not any dating sites for very hot, you know, in shape fitness models looking specifically looking for overweight dudes. Show me that site and maybe I'll change my mind. But until you do, it's simply bullshit and it's deflection is what it is. And again, it's this sort of masculine apologetics, meaning like, well, you know, guys like everything, but he's not incorrect when it comes to men's standards of beauty. We are all over the board. Men have fetishes. Okay. Women rarely have fetishes. And if they do, they learned it from a guy, right? <laughs> like, oh, they like bondage. Yeah. Well, this guy was with like bondage. And so now I'm kind of into it too, you know, but they had to be introduced by a guy. When you look at the standards of beauty for men and women, like the idealized masculine beauty for women hasn't changed since Greco Roman times. It's the guy who has kind of the like swimmer's body and has like a runner's body, has some muscular definition. He's not super big. He's not like, you know, Ronnie Coleman, but he's like, he looks like, you know, some muscle to him but not a lot, right? And then for men, it's, and I can prove this to you, all you got to do is go on pub and you can see fat girls, thin, skinny girls, midgets, uh, blondes, <laughs> brunettes, you know, uh, tan girls, pale girls, whatever. There's a, like ladies, the, the best news of all this is there's a niche of porn that caters to your specific body type and all you got to do is find it. All you got to do, do is find, find the guy member. that's into that. All right? you got to do is find a member of the United States Army. And you are <laughs> yeah, yeah, 18 you are to 80, set. blind, crippling, crazy. Yes, you sit so. outside of Fort Hood, Fort Bliss, yeah. you are going to get yeah. you some some booty yeah so but i was i thought that this was interesting because i do understand this like i get like there's certain things i don't understand i don't understand why guys have like foot fetishes like like where did that come from right but i know that enough guys do that it's a thing like women can make money off of foot fetish fans or something like that right so i understand that that's you know sort of the specifics kind of learned behavior but then there's the instinctual side of things which is we want a woman with an hourglass shape which is the hips to waist yep. ratio and you know. the part that he brought up is the idea of a 0.72 around 0.72 mm-hmm. hip to waist ratio is the one men tend to prefer amongst several different cultures and mm-hmm. when blind men are haptically are asked to describe or to create almost like with clay mm-hmm. the hip to waist ratio that they would prefer they're blind remember it's mm-hmm. not because of magazines they also prefer a 0.72 hip to waist ratio and does anyone want to guess the most fertile women in the world are a 0.72 hip to waist ratio is it weird Mm -hmm. how men prefer women who have signs of fertility and they're the most fertile? it must be culture Mm -hmm. it must be because of playboy Mm -hmm. it must be my heterosexuality must be a construct that was created through television radio and film Mm -hmm. 
or it's fucking genetics. Yeah. One of yeah. the two, not really sure, but if it is genetics, then that means beauty is not subjective. It's objective. Fuck me, what does that mean? That's terrible. Mm -hmm. That's crazy that that's going on. We need to get rid of all these patches. Yeah, Shout I, out to Swimsuit USA. I'm gonna be there October 20th. <laughs> so you're correct. I think there's an instinctual evolutionary side to this as well. But there's also a learned behavior side because I know that I know some of the brothers like big asses and like like mm. like a hippie, you know, thicker women. I don't understand that because to me, if you got thigh gap, that's the ultimate test right there. Right? But the thing is, is like then you have a particular type that you happen to be. Yes, I like to. women who, who genetically have a 1400 cc boob job. What is the wrong? Uh, yeah. with you? I don't understand. <laughs> yes. It's but, just genetics. But, it, but, but let me say it. In our evolutionary past, how many women had no, it's just their, it's that just were firm. that size? They're firm. You know, that's all that matters is firm. You know what I'm saying? There has to be some kind of learned, some kind of learned behavior. Like you guys are saying, like these days with whoever you want to believe it is, I think it's the satanic cabal trying to like there we go. disintegrate, disintegrate <laughs> humans' health like uh -huh. over thousands of years. Um, but I think that our health industry, clearly they've lied to western populations for you know years and years with the pyra food pyramid and stuff like that but i think that they've been attacking females obviously with the get fat mm -hmm. but i also think that they were attacking females breast size with the things that we were eating because um when i was in my 20s i was just flat and i i have no surgeries nothing i, I only dye my hair blonde mm -hmm. and i get my nails done that's it i have no surgery no injections nothing and when i hit 32 my boobs just started growing out of nowhere right so all my whole 20s i I was just flat like flat like so you hit puberty I would, in th your 30s and I, and it wasn't <laughs> even puberty because i was i'm horny through my 20s and had natural menstrual cycles and everything like that but somehow in my 30s and i think it was the stuff that i was eating changed the hormones well the and the stuff that i was eating straight up changed through my knowledge of oh sure. they're poisoning us and all mm -hmm. i've been eating is sugar and not real butter you know what i'm saying like yeah. stuff like that and because i wasn't eating like real butter my boobs wouldn't i think there's a a, I a, a natural thing I in butter that it makes chicks uh, boobs grow. What?